Hello there. Um, welcome to my first video of um, the basics of painting a miniature. Um, I know this is probably looking quite, quite. I don't know if it's intimidating or not with um, like the airbrush and a bust and stuff like that. But um, oh, I'm just going to be going through the. Um, just through the, the absolute basics and the concepts of everything. So, might be a touch rambly, but I'll try and be quick and precise and stuff and um, explain why I'm doing and what I'm doing. So, I'm firing up an airbrush. You might hear the, the tank go off a little bit, just like that. <clears throat> but I'm basically using an airbrush to undercoat my miniature. I know this is like a big bust. Maybe we could, at some point in the future, do something more basic, like a space marine or something. But um, I wanted to tackle this miniature first, basically. It's um, Fay in Prickly Leaves by Blackthorn Miniatures. Um, it's a Kickstarter project, which was 3D printed. Uh, done a little bit of repair work on it and everything, and it is ready for priming. So the reason why, we prime miniatures <clears throat> is mainly the um, the miniature doesn't accept paint on it too good and getting an initial layer of specific paint be it from an airbrush or a rattle can or whatever or even just hand painted on at first um, preferably something which projects though um, helps the actual paint which you'll be applying um, to to better sit on the model and not uh, depending on the material some stuff is like reasonably waterproof paint doesn't stick too good whatever <clears throat> but and it's also good to start from either a black a gray or a white now with this I'm going to be doing um, zenithal highlighting so I'm going to be doing black grey and white but it's all entirely um, personal preference I like to do black through to white so it informs my painting but we'll just go for it here so I just spray her black initially so we're looking to do just like initial bits of first let that dry and we'll go over it again to fill in all the gaps and stuff. But it's more sort of a... There's my tank going. More sort of an initial layer at first. You'll find this both with an airbrush and a rattle can. But it doesn't get everywhere at first. So just do a rough one. Wait for it to dry and do another one. So the initial layer is drying in certain places. So we can add another bit on. Get a nice, nice smooth, even coating, basically. If we spray too hard and build up too much paint, it can clump up and then, like, either flake or crack or whatever. And we don't want that. We just want a nice palette at the beginning of our painting process. I'm personally using um, Styren's matte black here, but you could use whatever. I mean, probably the most easily available one is Games Workshop rattle cans or like spray undercoat, which is perfectly fine. Absolutely no need to rush out and buy an airbrush set and stuff if you're not, if you're just starting out or if you don't want to, it's fine. I know really, really professional painters who use rattle cans. Perfectly fine. I'm just using what I got. So, um, if you are going for what I'm doing, which is black, then grey, then white, we've got to wait for the initial black to dry out. I don't know how clear it's coming through on the screen, but there are some parts which are still wet and some parts which are still curing. Now, the difference between wet and curing is that wet, you'll be able to like completely remove it with a wet brush. Curing is where it's dried, but it's not completely set. So if we took a brush to it now, we could tear it 
and I'll go through um, paint tearing on my um, next video, which I think will be layering. So we'll just wait for that to dry out. Grey next. You could just easily paint it up as like completely ambient light, where it's just, there's no like angle to the light and it's all just like out in sunshine. Or you can do it where there's like a focus light, which looks better than it sounds, to be honest. Um, on the miniature, and we can plan it here. And then, you know, when we paint it, we could just change it. It doesn't really matter. But it's good to sort of get an early image of it, really. This is taking forever to try. I think I clumped up a bit too much on the hair. Right, let's move on to the mid-tone, which I was going to do, um, of a grey. Don't need to do this whatsoever, it's just a preference of mine for conforming the light and stuff. Completely optional. So I'm going to be holding it at roughly where are we? 45 to horizontal. We'll see the results there. Same principles, nice and light around it. Yeah. So some of the black shows through in the lower areas, but it's mainly grey there. Wait for that to dry out, clean this. So like I said, I'm gonna be using white myself to have a little blueprint. Have a little blueprint of um, roughly where the light should fit, should sit on the model. Um, which we could just not stick to. It's just a little blueprint thing, but um, I'm going to be doing the light source like forehead downwards from this way. And you can do this with a rattle can, you can do this with an airbrush. You don't have to do it at all. Entirely up to you. Um, so I'm going to be <laughs> nearly, nearly from the top of the head. So this is referred to as zenithal, because Latin. So nice and light. The white stuff doesn't really like my airbrush, so sometimes it splatters. That's why I'm venting it on my hand, on my glove. All right, let's do this. Nice and light. emphasis as well. Prickly leaves and stuff. A little bit of thing on the hair. Maybe a touch on that shoulder as well. Let's find out. That's getting into ambient territory though. As opposed to zenithal which is light from above. Okay, I'm just clean my airbrush. So there we are. Oh, of course, plunge there as well. That's handy. Um, so, <clears throat> so I've done the xenophil high highlighting to sort of inform me the direction of the light and stuff like that. Um, absolutely don't have to, just do it from black or gray or white, however you wanna do it. Um, it is quite useful for planning for me. I'm quite used to doing it myself. Um, and if you're doing like a contrast type thing, like um, like all the glazes that are on the market at the moment, um, you could use it off of this and you've already got the highlights and the lowlights and you just slap the color on and it'll look awesome. Um, so we can, with the pre-highlight, we can kind of tell the, the something called value, where, um, where the attention is gonna be the, the light of the overall piece and stuff like that. Like, we're looking at this part of the model. This part's going to be in shade and complementing it, hopefully. <clears throat> so you can kind of see where the attention and all the emphasis is going to be on the miniature. Oh man, what's that? 
yeah, so I hope that's been useful there. Um, next video will be layering on the skin, I think, going through layering, choosing colors, and then shading and highlighting. So I hope that's been useful, and see you in the next video. Thank you very much.